I'm gonna put the other on. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Doodly doo. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're continuing the unsolicited, unwarranted, and generally unnecessary marathon of Red Wall themed cuisine. And I will tell you right off the bat, since it's just not our show if I don't give you at least a little bit of negativity really early on. So we did two dishes and I looked through the whole book and was like, I don't want to make anything else. But really it's just uh, when you think about it, like it's a, it's a food preference thing. I'm not a vegetarian or pescatarian and uh, the red wall little critters, they work. And then, you know, that kind of makes sense given their, you know, small nature, got small brains. I'm <laughs> just kidding, I didn't mean it. But yeah, tonight we're, uh, we're making vegetable mole bake. Looks like that. And here's the music, it's a company. I think that this is somewhat ironic. Insert the. You know what that means. In, in that this is a vegetable casserole that pretty much only contains vegetables that children don't like. So, uh, I don't know. Um, I have preheated my oven to 400 degrees. I have a pot of salted water warming up. I'm following a recipe from what is the Red Wall Feast, the Seasons, Red Wall Cookbook, Red Wall Cookbook. And I was really tickled by this recipe because half the ingredients are, are vegetables. I think it's a vegetable dish. And it's just like cauliflower, cooked peas, cooked carrots, cooked. And it doesn't really detail how to do that. So I, I, I think maybe this is like a bullshit frozen vegetable microwave thing. But I, I, I couldn't bring myself to do that all the way. So I got the actual vegetables. I'm just gonna boil them before I put them in this mold bake. I guess moles eat this. Anyways, I'm gonna cook the vegetables and then we're gonna layer them into a casserole. I'm gonna put a little uh, sauce on them, cheese on top, roasty toasty in the oven, and uh, that that's gonna be dinner. I don't really like the idea of eating only vegetables and cheese for dinner, so I'm gonna cook a piece of fish too. But that's okay, because in the Red Wall books, they eat the fish, they feed the birds, and they eat the fish. <laughs> But at some point, I gotta thank the fish for its life, because that was a big part of the Red Wall thing. Like, if you're gonna eat the fish, gotta thank them for feeding you. Some other cultures do that too. Since, since, since uh, this show is clearly about my personal life, my, my journey through life and not about cooking, I've been going to the gym pretty regularly this year. Feels good. Feels good, man. Is that a, is that a meme? Yeah, there's another meme for you. Typically, I don't, I don't go on Tuesdays when we film, because I don't want to be like too sweaty or too gross or winded but today thanks to the uh, you know like the natural enhancement of consuming pre-workout and running a lot I feel like really good I kind of was like going back and forth like well am I even gonna like drink alcohol on the show because I'm already like in some other state rather than my you know default grumpiness I don't know <laughs> grum penis but after careful thought yeah, sure. I'm gonna drink. I tell you what, the perfect gin and tonic starts with a lime. Because that's one of the three ingredients in the gin and tonic. Oh, I forgot to do my disclaimer. If you are a child who somehow stumbled across this video, I don't know, like tonight might be more friendly than normal. <laughs> might swear a little bit less. Maybe you can watch it. You're drinking on it. Well, drinking's okay if you're supervised. Kids. Kids. <laughs> Always remember to ask your parents' permission for everything. Okay, I got a cauliflower -y. I'm gonna turn this into florets. A little brown on it, that's always a good sign. I don't really work with cauliflower too often. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to remove the stem. You know, I'm sure there's some, some easier way to do it, but you know, I'm, I'm making use of the the brain that God gave me, so you guys are just along for the ride. That's not true, you guys are like, some of you guys are in it, some, some of you guys are in it for the correction comments, where you're like, oh, but this is, you know, you should, you should always wash your produce. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, well, okay, that's true, but uh, you know, if I, if I did that, would you be watching the show? I mean, that's, that's the, that's the cycle, you know? You gotta take the good with the bad, or the, uh, I really wanted to make a rhyme there with salami, but I can't think of anything <laughs> that rhymes with salami. So I, I am not going to try to make this into natural florets. Uh, in part because I think that would be 
hard to layer in the casserole dishes that I have. I bet this is gonna be completely fall apart when I cook it. But I think these, uh, this cauliflower is almost gonna like act like the grain of the dish. Almost like cauliflower rice. I think this this dish might be, this is probably like relatively low carb. Do you know that kind of thing? The, uh, the only real sugar you're gonna see in there are the carrots and the tomatoes. But you know, that's just, that's just plant sugar. That's not that big a deal. Anyways, I'm gonna start boiling this cauliflower. I'm just gonna plop it into water here. And I don't really know how long it's gonna take, but just hoping that uh, we can start the cooking process this way. Oh God. Okay. Uh, next up, we're gonna do some carrots. The recipe says uh, four medium carrots. These are not medium, they're pretty big, so I'm gonna do three, I think. I'm gonna peel them. Uh, here I am slicing some carrots. I'm your host Phil here, and I'm slicing some carrots. <laughs> They're done. Oh yeah. Don't have to do anything with the peas. We got 10 ounces of peas. Gotta heat them up. And then the uh, the last vegetable, 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 are slices of tomatoes. Yeah, well, in America we do what we want. The recipe says to hold the tomatoes, which was a term that, like, I kind of knew, but I didn't know how it applied to tomatoes. But I looked it up, and this means remove the core, so that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, the core for a tomato really is just kind of like that top part. And uh, we're gonna kind of thinly slice. I chose to use big, big bottom tomatoes for no particular reason, other than I thought it would be you know, a little bit easier to slice. Uh, I'm trying to like conceptually think about like, it's like gonna be like tomato, tomato, tomato. It's probably only need two. Two should do it. Two seems like a fine amount. All right, so you can see you can easily insert a knife into the cauliflower, so it's very much done. And so I'm gonna fish it out using a spider strainer, also known as a strainer. Okay, let those cool-ish. I don't need to really cool, just so you can handle them. Next up are our Carrots. I'm gonna pop them on in there. Disregard the boiling water splashing on you. And you might as well get your peas going too. They're frozen, yeah. That's how peas normally come. Unless they're in a can. I don't, I don't like canned peas. Ooh. And I take this moment to say that uh, the viewer and me were like peas and carrots. Gently. And what are we gonna do next? I guess we can make that, uh, that sauce. It starts, it starts with. One thing, I don't know why. <laughs> so now that we're, we've progressed this far, we're gonna butter the casserole dishes. You just do this by shoving butter on it, such as you would do, um, well, I just don't know what else you would do that to. Put the rest of that in a pan and melt it. It should be like two tablespoons of butter, but that's more. Hey, hey! Bowl, I'm gonna measure out my flour. So we'll say that that was like four tablespoons of butter. So we're essentially starting with a roux, also known as a roux, 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 roux. And I'm gonna measure out four tablespoons of flour. I need a lot of cream too. Ooh, maybe too much. I might not have got enough to double this recipe, but uh, we'll figure it out. If I really was doubling this, then it would be a cup and a half, and I just don't think that's, I don't think that's what I got here. But you know how I am with volumes. Yep, it's a cup. Ah, that'd be fine. What could go wrong? Uh, I need some egg yolks too. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that business is. So the way I always harvest egg yolks is I crack the egg, and I kind of blot the yolk back and forth until it's mainly just yolk. As such, that method always works for me pretty well. If you get a little bit of egg white, then well, I guess it, the dish is ruined. I'm just kidding. It's probably fine. That's the one of the highest forms of making jokes. It's when you say something you don't mean. And you say, I'm just kidding. And we're gonna beat those. Uh, beat the eggs well. All right, leave those to the side. All right, you'll need a whisk. Don't forget about your veggies either. So we're gonna put in our flour here. Kind of let that toast for a minute, a literal minute. Next, we're gonna add our cream, a little bit at a time. We're gonna turn the heat all the way down. I actually might have to put it on a different burner just because this, uh, this burner gets so excited. And I think I'm gonna have to add some half and half. <laughs> it's gonna be too thick. Yeah. 
that other half cup for a total of uh, one and a half cups. And you do not want this to boil. You want this to thicken. So you probably have to watch it pretty closely. If I see this acting up, I'm gonna move it to the back burner where it's warmer. Actually, I'm, I'm, I mean cooler. I was gonna do that now. Very low heat. Okay, while that's cooking down, we can start adding our cauliflower to this, the casseroles. Like I said, I'm, I'm working in, in two of them. Basically, just want a layer of cauliflower. I'm gonna try to evenly distribute them as best I can. Yeah, that's I'm not very good. I think it's good enough, though. But the uh, mole's gonna complain. On the other veg, looks pretty cooked. Peas and carrots, Jenny and me, Forrest Gump. You really don't get the reference. Kids. Kids who aren't supposed to be watching this. Ask your parents permission if you can watch Forrest Gump. Pretty sure there's a woman's butt in it. And then I uh, yeah, just plop these over to the cauliflower. Instructions say to, to layer it. I don't know how how in the in the heck you could possibly do that. So we're just gonna, we're gonna throw it in there. Who cares? Not the moles. Even when anthropomorphize, they, their opinions don't matter. That looks pretty good. Next up is our tomatoes. I think. We'll do for the sauce first. Yeah, sauce first. So not the tomatoes. No tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. This is getting good. It's what we want. All right. We can shred the cheese. I don't know where the cheese hat is. Sorry. I think that's a lie. I really don't know where it is. It's not downstairs. Could be. I don't know where it is. Crisis. <laughs> Sorry, at the foot of the stairs. <laughs> you knew the whole time. I had a, a suspicion. All right, I got some cheese here. It's about a pound of cheese. I don't think that's really necessary, but you know, as my brother once said, just add cheese. This is old style cheddar. It's like white cheddar, 17 month. It's pretty stinky. This is farmer's cheese, which is like a pretty plain cheese, but I think it'll be very nice on this dish. But I gotta shred all that. So I'm gonna do that now. This is a pretty hard cheese, so I'll probably have to use the, the fine the fine side of the grater. Show me your moves. That's my dance move. That's all I got. I'm tired. I went to the gym. I have grated the cheese. Okay, over here in our sauce that we've had going over low heat for a little bit, we're gonna take a couple tablespoons of the relatively warm liquid and drop it into our eggs that we beat. It's like that. Mix well, and then put everything back in the sauce. And we're gonna whisk that together. We will return that to the heat. And the, the reason you incorporate that little bit of hot liquid first is because you're trying to prevent the eggs from cooking or ribboning before you're making the sauce. I am salting and peppering the sauce. All right, okay, so we need to heat this up just to the point that it starts to steam. So we'll watch it very carefully. I think that it's a good idea to whisk, whisk the mi mixture. I thought this would be like a really no effort recipe, but I feel like I'm putting like, I'm making like a legitimate sauce. That's, that's something. You can see little wisps of steam just starting to come off, just like that. And we'll turn the heat off and we'll just let it sit probably like two minutes. Then we can finish up putting together a casserole. And I'm gonna put this fish in the oven. All right, we're gonna pour the sauce over the veggies. And I'm being kind of sparingly because I, I need to evenly distribute it. <laughs> but I think it'll be okay. It looks pretty decent. Okay, next up we have our tomatoes. Look at, look at how tiny that is though. That's nice. I like when things fit like that. That's nice. This is our, <laughs> kind, of, kind of like our, uh, our casserole's idiot brother is, is this one. <laughs> Where he just put the, the bad tomatoes there. <laughs> that has nothing to do with my actual brother. I'm just like talking about a metaphorical brother. My brother is the very nice boy. Uh, next up is the cheese. I can, I'll put that, I'll put that on. The things I do for the viewer. <laughs> oh look, I made a mess. Was it entertaining? Are you pleased? This dish feels pretty Midwestern. The spirit of casserole. I kind of just want to take this chunk of cheese and just be like, blah. All right, each one gets a little cheese blop garnish. All right. I think I should have salt and peppered it first, but I didn't. Oops. So next up is salt and pepper. Cheese naturally has salt in it because when they make cheese, they put salt in it. So salting the cheese is really just, just go the extra mile. All right. So first we're going to bake this for about 10 minutes. I think we might have to go longer. Um, it's my inclination. We want the cheese to melt, and then we're gonna turn the broiler all the way up so we can get a little bit of browning. Everyone knows the brown cheese tastes great. Well, I'll see you in a minute. Doodle. 
Okay, we decided to go 15 minutes. And just to give you an update, this is where we're at. Nice melted cheese, big glob in the middle. <laughs> Cause I put a glob there. Last step is to turn it all the way up to the broil. Which apparently on my oven's 525. But basically, once it gets up to temperature, I have to monitor what's going on there. And we just want a little bit of brown on the top. Extra flavor, extra good. And uh, yeah, we'll show you what it looks like. I actually uh, was not excited at all to make this, but after making it, it looks pretty tasty. Hopefully it's good. Vegetables and vegetable accessories. So broiler's on, and you can see for the, the little guy here, it's starting to brown. Just a little bit more and that'll be done. Versus this other guy, eh, it's pretty good. But I want more brown. It has been broiling for two or three minutes. In another minute or two, we'll do it. I say that in a sentence, for your benefit, viewer. Harris, viewer. That's another movie. Sorry, kids. They're done. So here we got the new guy. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, man. That looks like a pizza. And so does that. Yeah, boy. Also, there's some fish. <laughs> Thanks for your life. Well, clearly, we're gonna need to let that cool before we dig in. So, one moment. I don't know how long we need to wait. Can't be that long. Let's scoop it. Wow! It's an actual casserole! Look at that, that looks like... Eggs. All right, well, let's give it a try. I'm gonna try to get some of that tomato, but I think it might fall apart. Oh well, mm. It's pretty hot. Oh, this dreadful will make delicious. I had like no hopes for this. Like, I thought this would be a bull crap dish. I dig it. That's really yummy. Definitely adds a little bit of a pizza feel to it. <laughs> That's probably why my big bottom likes that. Well, it mainly tastes like cheese, and I think that's because of the just ridiculous amount of cheese I put on it. The vegetables complement it well, so it is almost like the glimmer of health within the dish. Kind of the sauce is, is thickened up, so it's almost like an egg bake. So it, it tastes, you can, you can taste the eggs, like it, in a nice way. The sweetness of the tomato is really pleasant. But yeah, I mean, this is like, this is actually pretty hearty. Like maybe you could serve it as a main dish for skinny people. But yeah, I gotta say I actually recommend it. Something that might be a nice addition that would uh, not be true to form the recipe that we vaguely followed. Um, I think it would be nice with uh, like breadcrumbs on top. Like a little crispy topping. Maybe cornflakes, that's a Midwestern thing. That's not found in this dish, but it is found frequently in casseroles. I think that texture would be nice. Man, somehow like all the vegetables are perfectly cooked. That's pretty good. But that's how you do it. Tune in next week for more of the same thing. <laughs>